nothing impossible for him to do. Aren't you glad of that? That's what we celebrate. He's our God, not some far off God. He's my God. He's your God. He's our God. And he's a powerful God.
you so much for your grace, your goodness, your love, for all that you've done for us, God. Thank you so much for everything, Lord. We magnify you, we bless you today, we glorify you, and we honor you. As we get ready to celebrate Thanksgiving, Lord, we, we are not forgetting what it's all about. It's all about you. And we have come to magnify and bless you and honor you today. And we glorify you for just being God, for being our God. The Lord is my shepherd. And when I have him as my shepherd, I don't have to worry about anything else. And Lord, this morning, thank you for being our God, our God, that you loved us so much. You came, you gave your life for us. That's why we celebrate today. You're not dead, you're alive. And we're so grateful that you are alive. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you so much for watching this video. If this has blessed you in any way, remember there are three ways that you can give. While you're at it, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss anything that Legacy Community Church has to offer. Hey, we love you so much. Have a blessed rest of your day. watching us online. Thank you for joining us today. And uh, this is Thanksgiving week, so I hope that you will be having a great day this coming Thursday, that whatever you do, if you do it by yourself or if you do it with family, I hope that you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Thanks so much again for joining us today. You glad you're here? Yeah. I'd rather be here than anywhere else I know of. I love to be here in the house of the Lord, but it makes it more, it just is more exciting and more fun for me to be here, to be here with you. And uh, so thanks for joining us today. Uh, all right. Let me get started here. If you have your Bibles... We're going to be looking at Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 17. We're going to look at two passages of Scripture, but I'm going to read them out of sequence. So I'm going to look at Mark chapter 5, verse 1 through 17. I want to talk to you, and this is the best Thanksgiving message that I can come up with. And I want to talk to you about the storm before the miracle. The storm before the miracle. Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 17. So it's kind of lengthy, but uh, I want to read it to you. I'm reading out of the CSB. I think that's what it is. C CSB. Christian Standard Bible. This is one I've been using to read out of this year. And uh, so we're going to read out of that. And I think we might have, I don't know if we have it on the screen or not. Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 17. They came to the other side of the sea in the region of the Gazarenes. As soon as he got out of the boat, a man with an unclean spirit came out of the tombs and met him. He lived in the tombs, and no one was able to restrain him anymore, not even with a chain, because he often had been bound with shackles and chains, but he had torn the chains apart and smashed the shackles. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always crying out and cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and knelt down before him and he cried out with a loud voice. What do you have to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you before God, don't torment me. For he had told him, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. What is your name? He asked him. My name is Legion. He answered him because we are many. And he begged him earnestly not to send them out of the region. A large herd of pigs were there feeding on the hillside. The demons begged him, send us to the pigs so that we may enter them. So he gave them permission and the unclean spirits came out and entered the pigs. They heard about two, uh, the herd of about 2,000 rushed down the steep bank into the sea and drowned there. The men who tendered them ran off and reported it in the town and countryside. People went to see what had happened. 
They came to Jesus and saw the man who had been demon-possessed sitting there dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who, had been, uh, those who had seen it described to them what had happened to the, uh, the demon-possessed man and told about the pigs. Then they began to beg him to leave their region. Jesus challenged the spirits that were in this man. And the spirit that was in this man resisted. The spirit, now let me tell you something, this demon-possessed man, the spirit that was in this man was not going without a fight. And so the reason Jesus was asking this man the question in verse 9 was because the man may know who Jesus is, but, but the man didn't know who he was himself. Now I want to ask you this Thanksgiving day, have you lost sight of who you are? Have you lost sight? This man must have been important that Jesus would go through all of the trouble to keep an appointment with him. To understand what I just said, now we have to read Mark chapter 4 verse 35 through 41. In order to understand that Jesus went through everything he went through to keep the appointment that he had made because he said we're going to the other side. We have to look at Mark chapter 4 verse 35 through 41, a very familiar story preached it many times to you, but I'm looking at it in a different angle today. On the day when evening had come, he told them, let's cross over to the other side of the sea. So they left the crowd and took him along since he was in the boat, and other boats were with him, and a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking over the boat, so that his boat was already being swamped. He was in the stern sleeping on the cushion, so they, they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, I don't, uh, don't you care that we're going to die? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Silence, be still. The wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Then he said to them, Why are you afraid? Do you still not have faith? And they were terrified, and asked one another, Who is this? Even the wind and the sea obey him. When you make God your priority, the enemy is going to send storms your direction because you never cross over without a conflict. Did you expect that when you gave your heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ that He would just let you go without a fight? That he'd let you leave Egypt without sending chariots to chase you down. I don't, again, I don't know how many times I preach from this passage of scripture over the years that I've been preaching. And a lot of times I always said, I know that you can survive whatever you're going through as long as you've got Jesus on board. But I would rather, today I want to look at it from a different angle. I think the better question would ask is, why did you survive the storm? Why? How many things has the enemy did in your life to try to stop you from having a relationship with God? He doesn't stop when you started, and he doesn't stop till you finish. You see, there was a storm sent to the Sea of Galilee to keep Jesus from getting to chapter 5, to getting to where he needed to go. Now, how do we know that the devil co-started the storm? Well, it could have been uh, maybe back then they were having global warming. So what started the storm? It says that Jesus rebuked the wind and the wave. Jesus doesn't rebuke natural elements. He rebukes demons. So the demonic oppression that was oppressing the man in chapter 5 was in the sea trying to stop Jesus from getting to the man to set him free. You following me? Chapter 4. The demons already know he's coming. They're trying to stop him. So you were on the devil's hit list before you were ever born. There are things in your family line that were happening before you ever were born. And they, they were designed to keep you from being in church at this moment today. So, so why did you survive? There are some things that I want to pull out of chapter 4 and chapter 5 uh, in these two passages of scriptures. Uh, and these are the things that... So the first thing that I want to pull out is out of chapter 4. You must be important. Because in spite of all of the storms with your name on them, in spite of the winds and the waves and the hurricane forces, in spite of every attack, look at you. Here you are today in church. You've made it. You've survived. Now you may be in the middle of a storm, but you're still here. Amen. 
You're important. You're, invi you're valuable, not because of the car you drive, not because of the house you live in, or not because of the way you dress, or not how many Instagram, Instagram followers you have. You're important because of your storm. Tell, the size of your storm tells you something about your importance and the size of your assignment. The devil doesn't call storms for somebody who's not threatened by, you know, he's threatened by. The devil has been huffing and puffing at some of your, uh, he's been huffing, puffing at your front door for, for ages. Uh, and he's trying to blow your house down, trying to blow you off of your foundation, but it hasn't happened yet. Every trial, temptation that you've been through, you've made it somehow because you're built on a solid rock and a foundation. The storm came suddenly. Now listen to me. When storms happen, they don't brood. They happen suddenly. And as soon as Jesus started in the direction of the man, a storm came up. Not because God wasn't with him and that God had left him and left him out there alone, but because he was headed in the man's direction and needed his help. If this is true, nobody attacks what's not valuable and you only guard what is valuable. Do you have some valuable things in your home? Do you leave your doors unlocked? Why? You don't want somebody coming in. Now, unless you still live in a little farming community like my sister law brother, they just started locking their front doors. They never locked their doors, never even took the keys out. They still don't. They go to town. I'm not even sure if they take the keys out of the car when they go to town. Second thing I want to pull out of this story is I want to now go to chapter five. Do you go to dead places? Do you go to dead places? Now, this man lived among the tombs. What's in the tombs? Dead things. The people tried to chain him up. They tried to shackle him, but he broke the chains. The Bible said that he smashed the, the shackles, and then he would hurt himself. And he'd go up on top of the mountain, and he would cry and weep, and he'd cut himself with stones, and he was out of control. Oh, yeah, Pastor, now, I know I got some problems, but I'm not that bad. He said his name was Legion. I'm not like him. I'm like one of the disciples that's going through a storm. I want to ask you this morning. Is there some area in your life that's out of control? Do you have some kind of oppression or chains? Do you have issues that are out of control? Control in your spending, your eating, your sexuality, gossip, I could go on and on and on. Now, now, first of all, Jesus knew that the man was crazy. See, he had an agenda. He, he just wasn't going across there. I believe that he was going with a purpose. When he got in the boat, he knew the man that he was going to encounter was crazy. But he didn't stop him from coming. He asked him his name when he got there, and he responded with, my name is Legion. The spirit within inside of him said, my name is Legion. Now, that represents 6,000 foot soldiers. So I've got to ask you today, what is your name? Do you know your name? Oh, you might have a name, an online you. Oh, you might have a Sunday morning you. And then also you might have a Friday night you that just, well, I don't need to go there. <laughs> and then there's the only you that you know that nobody else knows. There is a you that cries out in the night. Sometimes you inflict pain on yourself and you don't understand and you don't know why. The third thing I want to pull out of this story is the devil doesn't want you free. See, the demons caused this man to run to Jesus and they cried out, don't make us leave. We got it made here. Nobody bothers us. We really like it here. Would you leave? Don't bother us. We're not going to hurt anybody. We're not going to do anything. But I'm going to tell you, they knew this man was important, that he was valuable to Jesus. They knew they were about to have a vacate the premises of this man's personality, and they knew somebody strong enough to subdue, subdue them had showed up now. The question now is, why did the demons want to go in the pigs? 
The devil does not want to give up any ground once he has established a foothold in your life and your home. He doesn't want you to be the first in your family to not need a drink, to feel good about yourself, to feel up, to be stable in a relationship rather than running around from here to yonder. And some of you here today have already broken generation curses off of your families and he's not going to give up. He wants to stand guard in that same area that he had a foothold and he doesn't want to give up. I'm going to tell you something about demons. They know how to get information. And they know how to work toward a purpose and what is available to use to accomplish that purpose. Jesus said, let the man go. He's important to me. I went through the storm. The thunder, the lightning to get to him. Now now watch this. Everybody else had given up on him. But Jesus said, I want him. He went through the storm for the man. And he went to the cross for you. You must be valuable to him. That he would do all of that to come to you. The fourth thing that I want to pull out of this story in chapter 5 is the the enemy attacks what you value the most. Now remember I started with you must be valuable. You're valuable. Now the enemy will attack what you value the most. Jesus said you can go into the pigs. And the demons made the pigs jump off the high bank into the sea and they drowned. So you see he understood that. The demons understood something. They understood that the people in the region cared more about their pigs than they did the man that was hiding in the tombs and had all of these spirits and living there because, listen, there were 2,000 pigs. This was somebody's, uh, these were somebody's pigs that they had been raising and this was money to them. You see, this is not a a Jewish culture. This is the Gentile. And they were known for raising pigs pigs here in the Gadarenes. Uh, The enemy knows what you value and he knows how to hit you where it hurts the most. He'll use people to get you and to get to you and your relationship with God. If he can get people to offend you, what will you do? Hmm. I ain't going back here no more. If, If the enemy can get people to offend you, he'll say, I don't like that place. The people are they're horrible over there. Oh, you loved us when you got here. And now you're mad and you're, you're, you, you want to run away. And you're going to push us all away because, oh, I got offended. You see, you see, you were offended by some because somebody didn't say hi. I probably didn't see you. And if you would have said hi to me, oh, yes, I said hi to you, but you had your back to me. Well, I probably didn't hear you because the person in front of me was talking. He knows, the enemy knows where your insecurity is. He knows what you say to yourself when you look at you in the mirror. I told you last week, me and Butch, I don't know about you, we look at ourselves in the mirror and we say, hmm, you get better looking every time you look at yourself in the mirror. <laughs> Debbie said, there's one more in my family that looks at herself more than I do, and that's Maddie. <laughs> Debbie says, you look at yourself in the mirror more than anybody. I just want to know. I don't think my hair is going to go anywhere as stiff as it is. Got to make sure you look good. He knows what makes you feel ashamed. And he knows how to get you to lash out in anger. Since the demons couldn't stay in the man, they went into the pigs. But I, didn't I tell you all ago that they've got a purpose and a plan? See, if they went into the pigs, and if they were to kill the pigs, then, then these people wouldn't want Jesus here no more, and they would run away. When the devil had a meeting with God, he said, I've been looking all over the earth to try to find somebody uh, to devour. And God said, have you checked out my servant Job? The devil said he's only serving you because his herd is still intact. Uh, Let me touch his body and his children and let me take everything he's got. Listen to me. The devil will use anything to get to your faith. 
What he's after is your relationship to God, but he will use the pigs to get you to push away the presence of God. You are most vulnerable where you place your most value. Let me say that again. You're most vulnerable where you place your most value. These pigs were worth a lot of money. The demons know if, knew if they could just get into the pigs up and make the pigs drown in the water, the people would be so afraid and they would cause uh, their loss. They've lost their hogs, their pigs. Uh, they'll send Jesus away and nothing else will happen in this area. I want to ask you this morning, where is the enemy attacked you? Where is the place of your greatest value? Because the only attacks what is valuable. The devil wouldn't tie you up if he wasn't afraid of what you're going to do when you get loose. The storms are not about, you know, when I was growing up and I was young, I thought of the storms when they happened in our lives and things that God wasn't with me and he left me. The storm is not about God has left you. It's about understanding who you are. You are a child of God. What do you have to worry about? See, this Thanksgiving is about celebrating. It's celebrating what's on the other side. This year, we would say 2020 has not been something we can celebrate much about. And it looks like Thanksgiving's got left over, pushed over. Now it's just all about Christmas. Everybody's got everything up. Let me tell you something. We're celebrating what's on the other side. What's on the other side? God. Not only is he on the other side, he's with me right now. And he has not left me and I'm headed. And if the storm has come, then that means that God is getting ready to do something in my life or I'm getting ready to do something for God. The devil does not want me to get what God has for me. And he doesn't want me to give away what God has already given to me. He doesn't want that. So the storms come. Now, you may be in a storm today. You may have just come out of a storm. What are we going to do? We're going to celebrate. You see, he threw he threw him in the fire to show Nebuchadnezzar. He's God, not, not Nebuchadnezzar. And he can shut the, li the lion's mouth and demonstrate his own strength and his own power. You see, that's what God was doing. He was demonstrating his own power by throwing a, a Daniel in the lion's den. That's what God is doing. And so he may be letting you go through a storm to, to show you and to show somebody on what's going on. See, it's a demonstration of his strength. That's what happening. He drowned all the horses in the Red Sea so that the nations would know that there is a God. How can you explain the fact that you're still here? The trial came. The foundation shook. You, but your house stood firm. You don't know how many times over the course of my life I've wanted to quit and give up. Just about every week. Mostly preachers give up on Monday. That's when preachers quit. Monday morning. I preached my heart out and they just sat there and looked at me like they didn't understand a word I was saying. I sang my heart out and they didn't even clap their hands. Oh, you know, and we get up and I had an altar call. Not one person said they was going through anything in their life. God, they're liars. I quit, God, you know, you know, you, you, all kinds of stuff. I've been trying so hard. When storms come my way, I'm just going to wave them on by. I'm just going to wave them on by. My brother-in-law's, Donnie's dad, didn't have his glasses on and he was in one of these. He got in a, in a, a buffet. He was standing in the salad bar line. But on the back side, there was a mirror. And, uh, and he had his head down. He didn't have his glasses. And so he, he'd look up. He'd see himself in the mirror. He'd say, I, I'm not sure. Come on by. Come on by. Just come on by. I, 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 uh, I, I'm still getting. Come on. He'd, and every time he'd look, hey, come on, come on. I'll slide out of the way for you. But that person followed him. I'm coming to tell you, if, if, if you're in the middle of a storm, just wave it on by. Wave it on by. Wave it on by. There's something on the other side. Verse 18 said, and when Jesus set the man free, he went with him. He got in the boat. Now, this, is, this is amazes me. 
The demon said, Jesus, don't make us leave. And the man saying, don't make me stay. Jesus did not let him leave. I thought about that a lot. Because somebody here today, this is where you are. He said, I want you to go home to the same situation I delivered you out of. And I'm not going to take you out of it. I took it out of you. I changed your condition, but I'm going to leave you in the circumstance. And verse 19 said, go home. Tell them how much the Lord has done for you. In my studies, in my reading, verse 20, I just somehow breezed through that and I never paid attention to it. But verse 10, there's a word in the scripture that says he went to 10 different cities telling his story. He gave the man grace to stay in the circumstance that he was in. So I want to say to you, what story do you have to tell today? Now, how does that end up being Thanksgiving? The man was telling, and he didn't just tell it where he was. He went to ten different cities, and he was telling them about what God had done for him. Now, I want to ask you today, what has God done for you? What has he done for you? See, Thanksgiving, we, 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 we set aside Thursday to celebrate and be thankful. What do you have to be thankful for? What have you endured and went through? And you didn't drown. You didn't fall. You're still here. Doctors gave up on you, but you're still here. What, are you, what is your story? See, that's the thing that we have to celebrate today. My family came out of a dysfunctional family. Six of them were bootleggers. One was a circuit rider Methodist preacher. So I am the 14th preacher in my family line back to Daniel Boone. Man will be the 15th. Somewhere down the line, we didn't have a lot of preachers in our family line, but one broke through. See, see, I have something to celebrate. I married the, the, the love of my life. And she's still with me, and she has stayed with me no matter how ugly I've been to her. Oh, you see me, and you think I'm good. I can be ugly sometimes. You're not going to answer yes, are you? Sometimes we're ugly to the thing we value the most. And we say things, we don't mean them, but we say things to that thing we value the most. I remember that the first time I got to buy a brand new truck, Bought a Toyota four wheel drive. Never had, had a brand new pickup truck. Always one that was wore out. And I got in that truck, and you can you can ask Andy what was the first thing I did with that truck. I went out to where there was a mud hole that you had to go through that had been wallowed out, and it was deep and it was nasty. But if you could get through that, I could get to the place where there was fish. And Andy, just a little boy, he said, Daddy, what are we doing? I said, if this truck does not make it through there so I can go fishing, I am taking it back to the dealership that I want my money back. Pop, it's brand Or Daddy, it's brand new. I know it is, but I don't care. It's got to get me back there. I'm trying to say to you today, what, are you, what have you put your back? The truck didn't mean that much to me. I just needed it to get to where I wanted to go. I valued things more than that. I'm asking you today. I want you to think about what is it 
that you have in your life that is a reason for you to celebrate, not Thursday, but what about this morning? What is it that makes you want to raise your hands and sing? What is it that makes you want to jump every once in a while? What is it that it happens on Sunday morning that you get up and you can't hardly wait to get here? Or did somebody drag you here? I can't hardly wait to get here. I can't wait for you to get here. Oh, I'd love to see the place packed out, but listen, I'm happy just you showed up. But the thing is, this morning, if Thanksgiving's kind of been pushed on the back burner and everything is different this year in Thanksgiving, and some of us are making different plans for Thanksgiving, whatever it is, I want to ask you today, just like this man, he went to 10 different, I'm not telling you to go to different cities and, and tell what God has done, but you have a reason to celebrate today. First of all, he found you. And I'm going to say it like this. Some of you weren't worth finding in the eyes of people. But God said you were valuable and he found you where you were. What did he tell the disciples when, and, and those that had gone out and he sent the 70 out and they were casting out demons and healing people and praying over people and when they got back, oh, they were so excited. And what did he say? That's not the valued part. The valued part is your name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. Listen to me today. You have a reason to celebrate, even if you're going through a storm. Even if you're going through a storm right now, celebrate because He's in the boat with you and He's taking you to the other side. Father, today, first of all, God, we want to thank you right in your seat where you are. Would you thank him? Would you thank him for whatever it is that the biggest thing he's ever done for you? Would you thank him through the years? I'm not talking to people that just got saved. I'm talking to seasoned Christians here. You've got multiple reasons to be thankful. Just this moment for a few moments, would you just... Thank Him for something. You that are watching by video today, would you just right where you are in your living room or wherever it is you're watching from, would you right now just tell the Lord, I want to thank you because you did this for me 10 years ago. Lord, you did this for me how many years ago? Lord, you protected both my children when they were born. They're valuable to me. They were valuable to you. And, and, and you protected them through, through the conception, through the delivery. Lord, you protected Debbie and I so many times. You've put your hand on us. When we didn't have any money, someone showed up out of the blue. Lord, when our, we didn't have groceries, somehow or another, people just knew to bring stuff. Or there's so many things I could say, even in here, and those that are watching my video, there's so many things that you can be thankful for this morning. And, and I, 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 I just want us to take that time today to celebrate that, Lord, we thank you because, first of all, Lord, you have forgiven me of my sins. You found me where I was when everybody else gave up on me. You did not give up on me. Thank you for that. Lord, you've healed my body. You've touched my family. You've done so many things for us. And Lord, this morning, now Lord, I want to ask, Lord, I want to ask you that if there's someone here today that's struggling with some things that are out of control in their life, right where they are, God, all they have to do is say, Lord, this is what's out of control in my life. Will you help me? Right now, just say it. Say it. You can say it under your breath, but say it, Lord. This is what's out of control in my life. Will you help me? He will do it right now if you will let him. Father, today, thank you. Maybe you're watching us today and you're not saved. All you have to do is say, Lord, will you save me? I need you. It's not a complicated thing. It's very simple. You just believe that he 
he will. He'll forgive you. He'll deliver you. He'll set you free from the things that have you bound and are out of control in your life. Thank you for that today, Father.